Today's lesson, we're going to talk about conditional probability, intersections, and independence. Okay, let's talk about conditional probability. Usually when we're talking about probability, the denominator, the value that you're going to divide is going to be the total outcomes of any event. But when you have a conditional uh, probability, the, the dividing is not the total outcome, it's going to be outcome of your conditional. So um, example one is the example for that. And it say a letter is randomly selected from the alphabet. Find the probability of selecting a vowel given that the outcome is a letter that proceeds to H. So when we wanted to get... Okay, so let me write down what we're trying to look for. So we're going to look for a probability of the vowel given letter before H, right? So when you're talking about English alphabet letter, there's more than the sample space of the letter that's before H. But because your given condition was all the way to H, so that's going to give you sample space of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So before H, so we stop there. So from here, you're going to pick how many vowels you have, which is going to be A and E. So this probability is going to be divided by 7. Because that's, that's the letter before H, right? 7 of them. And how many vowels? 2. So conditional probabilities always get the sample size from your conditional. Let's try another one. It's say, out of 52 card, find the probability that of getting a heart given that the card uh, is going to be a red, right? So A, even though total outcome is 52, we're not going to use that 52. We're going to uh, use uh, given that. The conditions given that your condition is the red car so only red car is the half of the 52 card so will be 26 right so probability of a heart given the red car so since the red car is only 26, it will divide with 26 instead of 50, right? Uh, how many hearts there? Um, so there are four different shapes. So divide 52 by 4, you have 13 card in each shape. So it will be 13 over 26, which is going to be 1 half. B, um, what about it say, find the probability of getting a red car given that the car uh, is going to be hard. So the probability of a red card given the heart. How many hearts there? Hearts, you have 13. Out of that 13, how many red? That's another 13, right? Because all the hearts are red. So it will be 1. But where that 1 come from? 13 over 13. Um, the third one, it say find the probability of, uh, probability of getting a spade given that the card is black. Um, isn't that the same as the first one? Because... All the spade is the black. 
and you have um, half the card is black. So half the card is black is 26. You have 13. So it will be 13 out of 26, which is going to be one half. So when we're looking at um, example three, we have a salary of a president of college or university earn per year. We have a university president, we have a college president. Uh, earn less than 200 from each school, um, earning more than 250 from each school. The total of the president that we did the research was 189. And they want you to use letter A for earning 250 or more, B for the community college president. So if I wanted to give letter A for earning 250,000 and more, then last is going to be A naught. And then if we wanted to give variable for B for the community college presidents, then uh, university president will be B naught. So if we wanted to find the probability of each, um, this is just a regular probability. So um, let's find what A is. Your A is going to be um, 115. Your total outcome is 189. Okay. And probability of a naught is going to be 74 over total 189. Uh, probability of B is um, community college president, which is 35 out of 189 total, right? And probability of B naught is going to be 154 over 189. So that's how you're going to find the, the regular probability. The next one we're looking at it is going to be conditional probability because it's a find the probability of B given A. So we're not using this uh, total outcomes. We're going to use outcome from A. So I'm going to erase this. Um, it's a given A. So what's the A given is 115. So this total is going to be 115. So given A, given A, your total is that, but get from that given A, what's, what's B? That's going to be 14. So it will be 14 over 115. So then if you're looking at this one, um, given A naught. So A naught given is going to be that box. And finding B naught is going to be university president. So it will give me uh, 53 over 74. Depends on how you wanted to have your answer. Um, you can leave it as a fraction form or um, you can change to decimal solutions. If you wanted to change the decimal solution for this, do the 53 divided by 74, so it gives you somewhere close to 0.716. Let's try another one. Um, this one is a happiness for married and not married. The people who uh, the people who was happy was seven hundred forty four. Um, it was six hundred married people and one forty four not married people. It looked like people who got married more happier than not married. Uh, this one is going to be partially happy or not happy. Uh, total of one thousand three hundred ninety nine, but uh, out of that eight hundred thirteen was married and. Uh, 586 is not married. So either ones, married people are um, the, um, the larger values, right? Um, and the total research was 2,143. So using this, let's see if we can answer some conditional probability, right? 
Okay, so the first one, it said, find uh, V given M. So what's M and V stand for? So M is married, uh, and V is going to be very happy. So that's going to be married. M is going to be married. That means this is going to be M not. And then V is going to be very happy, so it'll be V. That means this is going to be V not. So once we give all the variable, let's see. This one right here, what's the total of M? Total of M is going to be this number, right? So out of 1,413, what will be V value? So out of this, find the V value. V value is going to be 600. That's how you're going to find your probability. What about the next one? Next one, um, let's use the, um, I don't know, different color, maybe pink. Um, given M naught. Given M naught, your M naught is this one. Um, so your total is going to be 750. And then what's the V out of it? Your V is this one right here. So this gives you 144 over 730. Let's see if we can use the green to do the next one. So given V, given V, given V is going to be this one right here. So total is going to be 740. What will be M from that box? Your M is going to be 600. So this is going to be 600 over 744, 44, right? The last one, they're asking if we can find M naught given V naught. So V naught is going to be this one right here. So your denominator will be 1,399. M naught out of that box is 586, right? So this is how you're going to find the conditional probability. And again, all this problem, you can change your solutions to the decimal by numerator divided by denominator. Before we go any further, I wanted to come back to the first page and show you two other formula. We have a product rule for probabilities, product rule for independent event. So the product rule of probability is going to be when they have intersections of those two events. So two event is something like um, intersecting little parts, right? And in that case, if we wanted to find A union of B, A union of B means your intersections area, um, you're going to do probability A, probability of A times probability of this given conditions, or the other way around, right? So that's the formula we can use. And if it's the product rule for independent events, um, independent event usually have, uh, there is no connection between those two events. So all we need to do is just multiply. So if those two events are not related at all, no connections, uh, no common area, then, then you're just going to multiply it, okay? With that in mind, if we come back and um, doing example five, it's a given probability of E is 0 0.04. Probability of F is 0 0.05. This one is asking you to find probability of union. Well, union is also given. Find the probability of conditional, right? So we're going to use the, the formula for it. What's the formula? Your formula is when probability of E given F, this is number of... Uh, intersections or probability of that intersections and then divide by probability of conditions right and if we wanted to change this 
we could say this is going to be also probability of E union of F is probability of E plus probability of F minus probability of E intersection F. We've seen this uh, formula before. Right? We've seen this formula from the OR probabilities, right? So here, um, if we wanted to place all this value given, uh, the union was 0.7, probability of E was 0.4, probability of F is 0.5, and this is what we don't know. So we're going to say that's X, right? So then this will give me uh, 0.7 equals to 0.9 minus a x. And when you re uh, move this x to the other side, it become positive x. And then I wanted to put number with the variable on uh, uh, number without the variable on the other side. So I will subtract 0.7. I will get 0.2. So your x value is 0.2. That is something we can replace it in the first formula. So we will get 0.2 over 0.5, which is equals to, we can change to the, the, the same variable so that we don't get confused. This is going to give you about 0.4. Right. So the conditional probability with the only the probability given, this is how you be able to find your conditional probabilities. So then example six, this times the probability is not given. Actually, the examples were given, the situation is given. So this one, we wanted to know what will be the probability, uh, conditional probability of this. Um, it's a two fair coins are tossed. And it's known that at least one was had. So this is a, a condition, right? We wanted to find the probability that both were had. So I wanted to get the total sample size of tossing two coins. So I know what we're talking about. It's going to be either head and head, head and tail, or tail and head, and tail and tail. Out of this, least one was hat. It's known to be at least one is a hat. That's going to be three, right? So if we wanted to find the probability of, um, let's say this is going to be even uh, one and then find the probability that's going to be both hat is going to be even two. Then event two given event one is going to be, uh, this is three, and one out of three. Getting an event which is getting um, both had is going to be just one out of these one, these one had is going to be three, right? So it will give you 1 over 3. What about example 7? It say if 60% of department stores customers are female and 75% of the female customer has a credit card at the store, what is the probability that the customer select at random is a female and has a store credit card? So let's give the variable for it. Um, I wanted to give S for all the store customer. So S is going to be all customer. And let's say um, female customer, we're going to use variable F. Uh, uh, with the store credit card, we wanted to use the variable C. Then probability of F is going to be 60%, so it will be 0 0.6. Um, and probability of C given F is going to be the probability of F and having a 
credit card is 75%, right? 75%, so it will be 0.75. Um, so then if the question is asking N, right? And so we're looking for probability of F and C, then we will do probability of F times probability of C given F, which is 0.6 times 0.75. You have about 0.45 uh, probability, or you could say 45%. Uh, depends on how they want you to answer it. If they don't, um, they say what is the probability. So this is what they're looking for, right? But if they ask for percent, that will be forty-five percent. Let's look at number eight. Two balls are drawn without replacement. So this is important without re replacement. From a box contain three blue and two white. What is the probability of drawing a white on a second drawing? So I'm going to uh, give you the, the graph so you can see where this value comes from. So we are going to draw first times and this is going to be what you're going to draw second time. First time, because you have a three blue and two whites, your only option is getting either blue or white. The uh, chance of getting blue is going to be three blue out of total, which is going to be five. Uh, chance of getting white is going to be two out of total, five. If you draw blue for the first time, the second time, you can get either blue or white. Because without replacements, your option got reduced. If you got blue for the first time, now you only have a two blue remains out of total of four. So that will be your probabilities of getting blue and blue. And if you uh, pick blue for the first time, you still have two white left, total of four. So that's going to be your options. What about if you had a white for the first times? Still, you're going to have either blue or white. Because is without the replacements, uh, you will still have three blue remaining because you pick white for the first times, but total get reduced to four. And white is going to be, if you pick white for the first time, now you only have one white remains out of four. And the probability that we're looking for is drawing a white on a second, right? So probability of drawing white on a second time is going to be this and that. How do we figure out the probability of that? Well, you're going to multiply this and this and add them up, right? So that gives you 3 over 5 times 2 over 4 plus 2 over 5 times 1 fourth, which you will get, let's reduce, so it will be 3 over 10 plus 1 over 10. That gives you 4 over 10. Again, reduce, it will be 2 over 5. We're going to look at a few more examples. So here, 
We have suppose six potential jury remains in the jury pool and two more to be selected to sit on the jury for the trials. The race of the six potential juries are one Hispanic, three Caucasians, two African Americans. If we select one jury at a time, find the probability that the one Caucasian and one African American is drawn. So here, um, make sure how many we have remain six, right? One Hispanic. So for the um, convenience, I'm going to use just the letter three Caucasians and two African Americans. Um, they're asking to find the probability that one Caucasian and one African American is drawn. When you're looking at this, you have two cases. Um, the first case is going to be having a Caucasian first. An African American second, and also you have getting an African American first. So we're going to find those two probability and add them up. So we're working on A first. So let's say uh, probably that we're looking for is one. Caucasians and one African Americans. And I just mentioned it to you. Uh, that comes from getting a Caucasian first. It means that you're going to get African American seconds. given Caucasian on first, right? And then we're adding probability of getting African on first. Means that Caucasian on second, given African on first. So that um, getting a Caucasian first, you have three Caucasians, so it will be three out of six times. Getting African seconds given that Caucasian first, so you're assuming you pick one person already out of six, so your total will be five. And African American didn't get picked, so you still have remain of two, right? And plus, what will be the probability of getting an uh, African first is going to be uh, 2 out of 6 times the second time because you pick already one person, getting a Caucasian is going to be, still you st have all three Caucasians, so it will be 3. So when you're uh, simplified and multiplied, 2 goes into 6, 3 times 3 and 3 reduce, so you get 1 over 5 plus, this is the same thing, that will be 1, 3, 3, 1, so it will be 1 over 5, when you add them up, it will be 2 over 5, which gives you on a decimal form of 0 0.4. So you could answer your solution with fraction or decimal, whichever they're asked. So probability is going to be 0 0.4 or 2 over 5. Let's look at the B. It say two cards are drawn without replacement. Again, without, so your total number is keep reducing um, from an ordinary deck, which means you have 52 cards. Find the probability that the first card is the hearts and the second card is red. So don't forget your total is 52. 
and the probably that we're looking for is getting a heart first and red seconds so this is going to be probability of getting uh, hearts times probability of getting red given hearts so probability of getting um hearts is out of 52 one fourth of 52 is the hearts because you only have four different shapes so when you equally distribute uh, it will be 12 over 52 or when you reduce it it become one fourth times um, now because you pick one your total will become 51 and how many hearts there i mean how many reds are there red is half of it um but then you're assuming your your heart the first pick was your heart which is the red so then it's going to become 25 cards because you need to subtract one right out of 26 all red you're going to subtract one card because you are assuming you pick one hearts and hearts is red it will give you 25 over 204 that gives you close to on a decimal of 0.123 so your that will be your probability of values Example 10, in two toss of single fair coins, shown that events ahead on the first toss and head on the second toss are independent. Well, um, if you are guessing, we can all, uh, I mean, if we can picture it, we can tell this is going to be independence because independence means uh, will not get in fact of what happened in the first times. So no matter what you get in first toss, when you're tossing off for the second times, you have um, either getting head or tail, not reflecting on what you had from the first time. So we will say this event is independence, but how can we prove that? So let's look at the sample size. Tossing two, we will have head and head, head and tail, and then tail and head, and tail and tail. And if we call head on the first toss as A, then the event is going to be either getting head and head, head and tail, and a head on the second toss as event B, that will give me head and head or tail and head. So if we wanted to get probability of event A, it will be 2 over 4, which is 1 half. Probability of event B is also the same thing, 2 over 4, 2 out of 4, right? Which is 1 half. And when we're looking for um, intersection of those two events it gives me 1 over 4 and 1 over 4 come from 1 half times 1 half which we didn't subtract any intersections they didn't have any intersections right so using that um, format we know that these two events are independent 